Footballers' wages has been a news headline and controversial subject for many years. Throughout this documentary, we will determine why they earn so much and do they really deserve it. Investigating only the facts and figures gathered, rather than personal opinions, we will present evidence that maybe they do. The main focus from the public has always been, why should a footballer earn in excess of £50,000 a week when there are doctors, nurses and policemen that don't earn this much in a year? Surely these professionals deserve to be paid more because they do something much more important than just kick a ball around. But when you start to look into the facts and figures, stepping back from the moral high ground, a similarity becomes visible into every field of work. Everyone knows the money in football is substantial due to the value of media rights the game generates. And since the formation of the Premier League in 1992, that value has rose to over 10 times its original deal. It has increased from 304 million to 3.4 billion in just 20 years, with its current deal expiring in 2013. As with all businesses, growth will raise the value of salaries down the hierarchical structure. As footballers are the sole reason the game is watched, surely they have a right to claim some of this revenue, as without them it would not exist. 600 million people worldwide in over 200 countries watch the Premier League on a weekly basis to admire the top 5% of professional footballers. So do they deserve a piece of the action or should the club owners pocket the lot? When looking at other companies and businesses, would we see a pattern where the top 5% in any career earns a much higher wage to everyone else? Well, the answer becomes evident when research into government salaries and budgets were discovered. The top 10 salaries in the NHS, 8 of them GPs and the other 2 consultants, average at £370,000 a year. Furthermore, the top 5% of permanent secretaries, which include the Department of Health, Education and Transport, earn an average of £210,000 per year, with a top bracket of £277,000 a year. With footballers, their market value is driven by demand, where all of this money is derived from the taxpayer's pocket. The taxpayer has no choice in how or where this money is spent. So what gives the GP the right to take home a quarter of a million a year salary when a nurse earns 20000 a year? Why does a doctor earn more than a nurse? The same reason a Premier League footballer earns more than a League 1 or 2 footballer. The doctor is more proficiently trained in the medical field than the nurse, the same as the footballer's skill level. Taking into account that we live in a capitalist state, everyone has equal opportunity to succeed and be the best at what they do, usually through hard work and commitment of a unique talent. If you are unhappy with your job or salary, what's stopping you from changing? What many people do not understand is the hard work, commitment and pressure a football undertakes. How could anyone in a career handle the pressure of thousands of people screaming and booing at you if you fail to impress or perform? Or the constant attention in your daily life watching and waiting for you to slip up? Aren't we all human and entitled to make mistakes in life? Life, liberty and the freedom of choice of employment are listed as human rights by the UN in which everyone has the right to own property and possessions and pursue a line of work they choose. Many people believe that capitalism is, is the downfall of the economic crisis we have today, which in some parts is true. The alternative to this is socialism, but would you like to live in a socialist state whereby all careers and jobs earn the same? Socialism also imposes that individuals should not have ownership of land, capital and industry either but rather the community collectively owns and controls it. Would you like to live in that world? Although this method does sound noble, it kills the motive to compete, as the individual gains no benefit. How would those GPs feel when their hard work to become the best isn't rewarded, and the nurses at the bottom of the hierarchical structure earn the same? Why would a footballer sacrifice their childhood, and in some cases their education, to be the best? only to earn the same as a factory worker. What do they do when their playing days are over at 35, with no job, no financial security and no education? Football, among many organisations, thrives on this structure, and to impose change will cause more problems than it would solve. 
Inventions such as Apple wouldn't have existed without capitalism, as no rich investor would have taken the risk on Steve Jobs. The power of football has changed the world as such. Imagine a world without such inventions or such infrastructure. We are taught to succeed and be the best, and the reward should be just. Those top 5% of footballers are justly rewarded by their market value. Capitalism provides the hierarchical structure which can be seen in our national health service, government and military. Without structure comes chaos.